In today's video, Zach wants to lose his love handles. His back looks like this. He wants to get shredded where I get like this. And I'm gonna explain to him exactly how to do it. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Vella from ProPhysique.com. And today we're gonna talk about that stubborn area of fat for men, the love handles. Now, I don't know why they're called love handles because we don't love them, but I guess if you're getting some loving, maybe they're grabbing your handles. I don't know. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But the point is, we don't like them. And I think men and women differ a little bit in their storage of body fat. And this is probably one of the areas, especially as a someone that coaches competitors, I notice men, myself included, hang on to that lower back area a little bit longer than women. I see women get their entire upper body shredded, but they'll hang on to a little bit more in the butt and thighs area. Whereas men, that area might lean out first, but that lower back, so annoying. So I got a great question today from Zach. So I want to read it to you guys because I found some possible resolutions here. I'm eating about 1,789 calories a day, training from three to five times a week, 10,000 steps a day, 30 years old, five, six, 172 pounds, 22% body fat. I feel like I'm pretty muscular and I'm looking at your pictures. No argument there. Um, now my macros are 150 protein, 150 carb, don't usually hit that 33 fat. Tips, advice would be great. It's pretty hard watching my strength go up, but my fat isn't going down. Now, first thing I noticed was when you said you were at 1,789 calories, but you gave me your macros, there's a big, big discrepancy here, okay? Because the macros you gave me are less than 1,500 calories a day. So there may be an issue right off the bat with your nutrition. Now, depending on how you're tracking, how consistent you're being, that's really gonna result in seeing this area come off. Now, the way I like to think of the love handles, the lower back, is that body fat comes off in a predetermined pattern. That pattern really is gonna result in you having to diet down longer and longer to get that area off. Now, if you were previously very, very overweight, I've also seen it become an even more difficult area because the skin will actually become a little bit stretched. Now, if you're younger, you seem pretty young. If you get lean and stay lean for a while, I've seen the elasticity of that area return, okay? And so this is a good reason to really never get obese because there is going to be problems with skin elasticity depending on how long you are overweight. Don't know if that's your history, could just be genetics. Either way, no one cares because it's your genetics, it's your body, and if you wanna see the results, it's gonna be up to you to do the work. So let's talk about what that work is. For me, that work is determining where your calories, where your activity are, and are you losing weight? Now, you said you're getting stronger. So there's potential here where you're actually recomping. Even though the scale may not be moving, you might be putting on a little bit of muscle. But if you're a natural athlete and you've been training for, you know, more than two years, adding muscle is going to be a slow process. Fat loss does not have to be that slow. In fact, I would suggest you should be dropping one to two, maybe even more pounds per week because fat loss has a rate limiting step. If we're trying to ensure we're keeping our muscle and we're trying to lose body fat, the research shows that for performance to be good, 1% of our body weight per week is a good goal for fat loss. So let's talk about your steps. Now you said you're getting a lot of steps per day. However, what are you doing outside of that? What is your job like? Looking at the 24 hour window of activity is a great way for us to come up with solutions on how to lose more body fat, meaning you've got to increase the deficit if you're not dropping. However, you don't want that deficit to interfere with your ability to keep building muscle and to feel good. And for this reason, instead of steps, you could be doing something a little more intense. Now, something you can do in lieu of steps is like a ruck or a knapsack walk where you're putting on a backpack that's got some weight to it and you're increasing the intensity and calorie burn of your walks. Also, if you can have access to something else like a bike, like an elliptical or an incline treadmill, you could increase the calorie burn during that time. Or you could just simply be more active, take more walks, do more things that allow you to do that. But the first thing I would really do is nail down this issue with nutrition because there's a few hundred calories difference here between what you're telling me you're eating and what your macros suggest you're eating. So if you're having a few hundred calories per day that are unaccounted for, that can certainly prevent you from losing body fat. The leaner you get, the more details matter, okay? It can be quite easy to lose some body fat just by eating a little bit less junk food, moving a little bit more, walking a little bit more. But the longer that process goes, the more details matter. I have a lot of people come to me and they say, hey coach, I started eating cleaner, I started walking more, 
but I've plateaued. Well, eating cleaner, eating healthier does not have a number associated with it, right? I don't really care if somebody tells me they're eating healthier. I care if they can tell me what their macros are, their calories are, because then we can adjust that. Likewise, saying they're moving more, that's great, but more than what? And what are you currently at, right? So you have a certain amount of time each day to devote to this. The more time you have, the easier it's gonna be. The less time you have, the more effort you have to put into those sessions. Also making sure you're taking care of yourself. Now, if you're only getting 33 grams of fat per day, I would probably suggest that you're compromising things like hormones, digestion. That is a very low amount of fat, okay? So for someone your age, I would not say suggest going below 50 grams of fat, but even if you bumped your fat up to say 50 grams, that's another 17 grams more than you're taking in now. You know, you're looking at just over 100 calories and you're still not at the number that you suggested you were at. So it might behoove you to pay a little bit more attention to those numbers because while you can add some calories and get some metabolic benefit and have more energy throughout the day to move, that would be my suggestion. As a coach, I have to take in all the data, right? And this is why we do weekly check-ins. This is why I have a proprietary system that I created for my athletes to plug in their, their calories, their cardio, their activity, their sleep scores, their wellness scores. And then we can look at this. Just based on this information here, I would say there's a lack of detail going into your nutrition um, and, and losing this love handle area, it is going to be something that happens later on down the road. You suggested you wanted to be like 12 to 13% body fat. That's probably where you're going to have to be. That's probably another eight to 10 pounds of body fat that has to come off. So giving yourself another, you know, six to 10 weeks to get that done and see that progress, but being a little more diligent with your nutrition, not suggesting you're not, but just, you know, what I'm going off here a little more diligent with your activity throughout the day and finding ways to create more of a caloric deficit, whether it's more activity throughout the day, whether it's more intensity in the activity that you're current doing, whether it's restricting your calories a little bit. And something I've also found very beneficial during these periods of calorie restriction, it's high carb days. So you suggested you're at about 150 carbs a day and sometimes you're not getting that. It might really benefit you to bump your carbs up to 250 grams once or twice a week really restore that glycogen, really give you that energy, really help you with, if you're having any brain fog with the lower carb approach, just to keep things moving. But ultimately, when you're talking about low back fat and the areas of the body that are stubborn body fat, I think of that as people being stubborn, not as body fat being stubborn. I think of that as people being stubborn, not as body fat being stubborn, because the body fat is just going to respond to how we treat ourselves. Okay. If you are overeating and underactive in your past puberty, well, you're not growing any taller. So you're just gonna end up putting body fat on. And I'm certainly guilty of this myself. And if you wanna lose body fat, sometimes we can get caught up in the numbers. Well, I should be losing based on what I'm seeing, but if you're not losing, that is the most important thing. This is about you. This is about the specifics that are indicated by your progress, taking pictures, taking measurements and taking your weight. And if you're not seeing progress each week, then you got to adjust. You got to take the data that you've learned and go, okay, it's not working. I have to change something. And if you don't, well, you're just going to be spinning your wheels for a while and then you're going to complain. You're going to get frustrated and then you're going to probably overeat or just skip out on some cardio because you're over it. But when you see progress, when you see the pictures looking different, when you see the scale going down, there's probably nothing more motivating than that. So yeah, lower back fat, pain in our ass. But to get it off, you just have to keep looking at the data and figuring out what it is you need to do to get that lower back shredded. Okay. Hope you guys are off to a great start to the week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.